feature speaker Peter Kyle, District Governor Lyle Chase, and Pardoning Service Maggie, District Governor elect Sonia Lane, District Governor nominee Leslie Ramdani, all our past District Governors of 7030. I, I see, I saw David Edwards on, Dominique Benary is on with us, Leslie Ramdani, not Leslie Ramdani, um, that's our DGN, sorry. I also saw past district governors from 7030 with us, Harish Ramchandani and Felix Stubb. Welcome. Welcome to our rotor actors, our interactors, our early actors, parents of our early actors who I know have joined us this evening. We have some friends from community peacemakers who I also saw in the uh, participant listing. All guests, everyone, good evening. We are delighted to welcome you to District 7030's celebration of International Day of Peace. The International Day of Peace, also known as Peace Day, is observed worldwide every year on September 21st. Established in 1981 by unanimous United Nations resolution, Peace Day provides a globally shared date for all humanity to commit to peace above all differences and to contribute to building a culture of peace. The 2020 theme for the International Day of Peace is Shaping Peace Together. The United Nations has asked that we celebrate the day by spreading compassion, kindness and hope in the face of the pandemic and has noted that this year it has become clearer than ever that we are not each other's enemies but rather our common enemy is a tireless virus that threatens our health, security, and very way of life. COVID-19 has thrown our world into turmoil and forcibly reminded us that what happens in one part of the planet can impact people everywhere. Our district 7030 is comprised of 72 Rotary Clubs, 47 Rotaract Clubs, approximately 70 interact clubs, quite a few early act clubs, with a vibrant peace committee comprising members from different countries within the district. The International Day of Peace has in the past been celebrated by clubs in our district through the planting of peace poles and engaging in peace walks and forums on this day. The picture you would see on screen is from February, uh, is from 2017, when the Rotary Club of Princess Town in Trinidad collaborated with the Mayor of the City of San Fernando and the Mediation Board and engaged in the planting of a peace pool outside the City Hall at San Fernando. We were privileged to have on that occasion three of our now past district governors present, Wadi Soma, Dominique Benary and Roger Bose, as well as attendees from various Rotary Clubs, Interact Clubs, and other peacemaking organizations who all joined us in a candlelight peace walk around the city square prior to the unveiling of the peace pool. In the next picture you would see in 2019, the Rotary Club of Pinal Trinidad spearheaded a presentation on the Global Peace Index on International Day of Peace, which was preceded by a candlelight walk within the city of San Fernando. The South Rotary Clubs in Trinidad joined in the event, which again saw a participation of Rotarians, interactors, youth groups, and representatives from other NGOs coming together to celebrate peace. Today is a day of celebration. Rotary and the United Nations have a shared history of working towards peace and addressing humanitarian issues around the world. And you would hear very shortly from RI Director, our feature speaker today, Peter Kyle, on Rotary's historical role as a peace building organization. But before we call on Peter to speak, we have a very special video presentation that has been put together by the Rotary Club of Pinal, Trinidad. The Rotary Club of Pinal is the first peace builder club through the RAG for Peace in District 7030. They have an active peace building committee and they are also the sponsor club to six interact clubs and two early act clubs in South Trinidad. I am aware that the Rotary Clubs of Maraval and Port of Spain Central are en route to becoming peace builder clubs 
and I know that their members are with us tonight. Interactor Sudarshan Motilal has produced the following video on behalf of the club in commemoration of World Peace Day, and I invite you to sit back and enjoy the performance of Heal the World by our early actors. In honor of the International Day of Peace. That, that deserves a hearty round of applause. Um, those are our early actors from the Diana and Vedic Memorial School and Langwa Presbyterian School in South Trinidad, together with the interactors and, of course, their sponsor club, Rotary Club of Pinal's input. So, having set the tone, I'm now going to call on our committee member, Marguerite Nushaya of Suriname, to introduce our feature speaker tonight. Marguerite, over to you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, good evening, all. We are honored to have an all-round Rotarian and a very accomplished speaker with us tonight. 
Peter first came to the U.S. from New Zealand in 1973 to pursue postgraduate studies in law at the University of Virginia as a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. After a career in private legal practice in New Zealand, he returned to the U.S. in 1992 to take up a position with the World Bank as a senior international attorney. He retired from this position in 2009. He was inducted into Rotary in 1976 and has since served the organization in many capacities. He has been particularly involved in Alumni Rotary Peace Fellow activities and has chaired both the Alumni Relations and Rotary Peace Centers committees. He has also served as an International Assembly Trainer, COL Delegate, RI President's Representative, and Wasserach Board Member. He served as the Dean of the Rotary Representative Network and is the RI Director for 2020-2022 in Zones 33 and 34. Peter has received the Global Alumni Service to Humanity Award together with the Service Above Self Award and the Citation for Meritorious Service. He and his wife Margaret live on the West River in Maryland in a home designed by Margaret and close to their two children and one grandson. Dear Rotarians and distinguished guests, may we receive a warm virtual applause for our wonderful speaker, Rotary International Director, Peter Kyle. Thank you, Marguerite, for that very gracious introduction. Dr. Lyle, Debbie, uh, I'm delighted to be with you tonight. I can't tell you how pleased I am to see uh, so many on the screen. A special shout out to my good friends, Harish Ramchandani, David Edwards, uh, and there are probably others that I should recognize. Forgive me if I don't recognize you all. Uh, over 120 on the screen, this is amazing. As uh, my Greek mentioned, I come from New Zealand, which accounts for my strength. Um, and when I grew up in New Zealand, the Caribbean was a romantic, was a romantic place. We sort of dreamt of uh, islands in the sun, but more importantly, it was cricket. That's what defined the West Indies, the Caribbean. And now I'm in Washington DC, almost as far from the Caribbean as it's possible to get in zones 33 and 34. But I still have that image of uh, uh, the Caribbean as, as being a paradise on earth. I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person. I hope very much uh, to meet you uh, at your district conferences next year. Um, I would like to commend the lady who, who gave the invocation. I always admire people who take the time to think of something really nice to say in the invocation. So congratulations, uh, uh, whoever you, you were. And Debbie, your introduction was fabulous. Uh, you did a great job, you thought about it. I have to say, it's been a pleasure uh, to uh, interact with Debbie over the last few months as we prepared for this event. Uh, she is just a, an amazing asset for your, for your district. When I heard the Rotary Anthem I, I had to resist the temptation to spring to attention. It sort of reminded me of the Royal Anthem. Um, it's a wonderful tune and I'm so impressed with, uh, uh, with the fact that you would include that in the program. But I think so far the, the coup de grace of this uh, event has been the performance by the children just a few minutes ago. And I think the chats, uh, in the comments in the chat box said it all. Awesome, amazing, incredible. Uh, Harisha's comment, it's quite emotional when you see children and you think of our background and, and the world that they are about to inherit uh, and the, the hope on their faces, the expectation, the optimism, it really gives us, us oldies uh, some confidence that uh, we may not have done a good job, but there are others who will follow us uh, who, will, who will do a good job. Uh, so congratulations. Please pass on my, my congratulations uh, to uh, all those involved in the, 
in the, the choir and the, and the girls and the children's performance. And I do want to congratulate the district uh, on this focus on peace. Uh, never has there been a greater need in the world for peace and unity. And you know, Rotary is right in the center of all of this. We have an extraordinarily rich and long history of peace building. And I'm very happy to be able to share just a few remarks about Rotary's peace building history. We all started, as you know, in 1905. Uh, the club extension started slowly. By 1910, there were still only 10 clubs. In 1915, we got to club number 15, which was the Rotary Club of Portland. And the focus for the clubs was, of course, service. But the overriding international issue at that time was the imminent prospect of war. The forces of nationalism were rearing their ugly heads in Europe and in 1914 England and Germany declared war on each other and that became the Great War. It's a terrible war, it lasted for four years and after the war was over once again the focus on Rotary Clubs was on peace. What could they do uh, to ensure that the, the devastation caused by the Great War would never ever occur again? In 1921, at the International Convention in Edinburgh, Rotarians passed a resolution calling on all Rotarians to promote international understanding, goodwill and peace. And those words, international understanding, goodwill and peace, became enshrined in the fourth element of Rotary's object and of course they constitute the basis for the Rotary Foundation. Next year we will celebrate the 100th anniversary of Rotary's focus on promoting international understanding, goodwill and peace. Rotary continued to expand quite dramatically in the 1920s and 1930s but again, towards the, the end of the 30s, once again, the prospect of war became imminent and in 1939, war indeed broke out in Europe. In 1940, in Havana, Cuba, of all places, and I might just say that in 1940, there were 58 Rotary Clubs in Cuba. Now, sadly, there are none although we hope that that will change before too long. In 1940 at the convention, Rotarians passed a resolution calling for, amongst other things, respect for human rights. That was the first time those words, respect for human rights, had entered into the international lexicon. And those, those words became the basis for the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights signed in 1948, perhaps the most significant international document signed in the last century. In 1942, a number of Rotarians met in London. They were concerned with the impact of the war on education, scientific research, cultural monuments, cultural activities. They passed a resolution which led to the creation of UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. In 1944, President Truman and Prime Minister Churchill decided that the time had come to establish uh, a new organization which would prohibit war for all time. This was the start of the drafting process for the United Nations. Rotary was one of a very small number of organizations invited to send lawyers and others to work with officials from China, the Soviet Union, the United States and the United Kingdom to begin the process of drafting. And in 1945, the Charter was signed in San Francisco. 49 out of the 800 delegates were Rotarians. I might just say that when I look back at the history of Rotary, and I've, I've read a lot about the history, Rotary's impact in the world was probably at its peak in the 30s and 40s. At that time, there was no such thing as a non-governmental organization. 
Now, as you know, there are thousands of NGOs, but that wasn't the case before uh, 1939. Rotary had become, in effect, the first and the largest non-governmental organization. At that time, the classification criteria for Rotary were applied rather more strictly than is presently the case. Uh, in order to be admitted to Rotary, of course, you had to be a male, and we, we rectified that, uh, that mistake, uh, but you had to be the senior partner or the general manager or the chairman. You had to be the sort of the head of your vocation, of your profession. As a result, when Rotarians came together, either at a district level or even more significantly at the international level, this was a very impressive body of senior professionals, senior businessmen, uh, very influential individuals in their home countries. And when they spoke at an international convention, the world listened. This was an important body of individuals. In 1946, the United Nations decided to establish an internship program. The idea was to bring young people from all over the world to New York to observe the workings of the United Nations. Great idea, but no money. What did they do? They approached Rotary and Rotary gave a grant of $18,000 to fund the first internship program at United Nations. Rotary's relationship with the United Nations really went into abeyance throughout the 50s, 60s and 70s. This was the time of, of the Cold War. But we reconnected with, Rotary, with the United Nations in 1985 as part of the Global Polio Eradication Initiative. Specifically, we partnered with UNICEF, WHO, the World Health Organization, <coughs> CDC uh, and subsequently with the Gates Foundation and the Global Alliance for Vaccines and other partners. Um, at that time, there were quite a few informal links between Rotary and different international organizations. So in 1990, the Rotary International Board formalized these relationships by creating the Rotary Representative Network. This is the body that oversees Rotary's relationships with the United Nations and other international bodies. And at the moment, we have around 18 entities in the network, uh, UNICEF, UNESCO, United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, United Nations Environment Program, WHO, FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and a number of international organizations, such as the World Bank, the Asian Development Bank, the African Development Bank, the European Union, the Commonwealth of Nations, the African Union, the Arab League, and Rotary has appointed Rotarian ambassadors, ambassadors with a small a, <coughs> excuse me, as our representatives in each of the cities in which those organizations are based. So we have two in Rome, two in Brussels, two in Paris, three in Geneva, where the European headquarters of the United Nations is based. We have uh, six in New York, four in Washington, and several others in Addis Ababa, in Nairobi, in Cairo. And they have been very helpful in promoting Rotary Days at the United Nations. Uh, we've done this in New York for the last 20 years. There was a time when the Rotary Day at the United Nations in New York was the third most significant event on the Rotary International calendar after the convention and the International Assembly. Typically, the board would meet either just before or just after the Rotary Day. Three years ago, for the first time, we met in Geneva, at the European headquarters of the UN. 1,600 Rotarians came together. It was a fabulous event. Uh, two years ago, we met in Nairobi the African headquarters of the United Nations. I had the uh, good fortune to be part of the planning team. And I recall going down to Nairobi. As I mentioned, the United Nations Environment Program, which is the environmental arm of the UN, 
is based in Nairobi. I asked to meet uh, with representatives of the UN Environment Program. Five young people came into the room, all environment activist looking people. Unbeknown to us, it turned out that the team leader was a Rotary Peace Fellow from New Zealand. Doesn't get much better than that. The second person was a Rotary Ambassadorial Scholar. The third person was the president of one of the local clubs. We had prepared our elevator speech. We didn't need it. They knew all about Rotary. And they came prepared with a list of 25 projects, environmental projects, which they thought might be of interest to clubs and districts. That led to a meeting between President Barry Rasson and the Chief Executive of UN Environment, which led to a meeting between John Hugo, the Chief Executive of Rotary and senior officials of UN Environment. And that led to a, a decision to establish a task force to prepare an environmental toolkit. This is a document uh, which was prepared partly by UN Environment, partly by the staff in Evanston, and partly by the Environmental Sustainable Rotary Action Group. It was promulgated in Hamburg last year, the International Convention. It's about 30 pages. It's a very professional, very practical document with all sorts of advice on how to identify environment projects, how to implement projects, how to evaluate uh, and monitor uh, environmental projects. So I commend this. Uh, go online to rotary.org uh, and find uh, the environment, the environmental toolkit. And I think you'll find it is very, uh, a very practical, very helpful document. And we are in the process of uh, establishing other toolkits for the other areas of focus. So moving on in terms of peace building agenda, uh, in the late 1990s, Rotary established a committee to commemorate the 50th passing of our founder, Paul Harris, and the trustees and the directors decided to establish the Rotary Peace Centers program. The first cohort of Peace Fellows went in in 2002. We partnered with six universities around the world, each of which was renowned for its uh, peace and curriculum, peace and uh, conflict studies curriculum. To date, we have around 1,500 Peace Fellows. We are in the process of uh, choosing another 120 uh, as I speak. And this has become a fabulous program. Uh, after, we've, after we've eradicated polio, and we will eradicate polio, I believe that the Rotary Peace Centers program may prove to be one of Rotary's most enduring legacies. Many of our graduates who graduated in 2002 and 2003 are now assuming positions of responsibility in governments, in the United Nations and other international organizations in the private sector. So we are really beginning to receive the dividend on this uh, extraordinary investment. And if you haven't liaised with the Rotary Peace Fellows, and I think you have, I, I know Debbie certainly has been involved with the, the Peace Center program, you really should reach out to Peace Fellows and invite them to be speakers. I think there have been quite a few from different parts of the Caribbean these are the creme de la creme. They are outstanding young people um, and, and worth meeting and, and worth listening to. In 2010, we established the Rotary Future Vision Program, which identified six areas of focus. And as you know, Peace and Conflict Studies was one of the, the six. And now, of course, we have seven with environment. Um, we've also partnered with a number of prominent Peacemaking, peacemaking entities. The Institute for Economics and Peace, Mediators Beyond Borders are two of the most significant, and those partnerships have really uh, become a very integral part of our activities. With the help of the IEP, we have developed the Peace Academy. Rotarians have often asked, what can I, as an individual Rotarian, what can I do to promote peace? Well, now, one of the things you can do 
is go online to the Rotary Learning Center and complete the Peace Builders program. It's a three hour program. You, you will qualify as a Rotarian Peace Builder and you will get all sorts of ideas on what you can do both individually and collectively uh, to promote peace. We also created the Rotarian Action Group for Peace and that is now developing chapters in other parts of the world. Yesterday I had the privilege of addressing the Hong Kong, Macau and Mongolian chapter of the Rotary, Rotary Action Group for Peace. And there are peace action groups establishing themselves in Europe and other parts of the world. So there are many ways in which Rotary is promoting peace. We have peace symposia. We bring uh, peace fellows together every third year at an international convention. We have many peace conferences. We now have a peace alumni association. We have, we've had cyber peace conferences. We have peace workshops. Peace is in our DNA. I'm often asked, what, what will replace polio? When we've eradicated polio, and again, I want to emphasize, we will eradicate polio. What will be our next corporate project? And of course, the, uh, the answer that I'm required to give is, don't take your eye off the ball. Stay with polio. But if I really get pushed on this subject, uh, I will say that I don't see Rotary becoming a maternal and child health organization. The World Health Organization has got that well covered. I don't see us becoming a water and sanitation and hygiene organization. That's an important part of our activities, but there are many organizations that are much better resourced uh, and much more technically uh, competent to address that important area. Likewise, I don't see us becoming a disease prevention organization or even a literacy organization. But in the area of peace and conflict, I really do think that Rotary has uh, uh, an important role to play. Uh, as I said, peace is in our DNA. I think uh, it's possible for Rotary to carve out a niche to add value. Uh, the area that I'm particularly uh, focusing on is peace and education. There are many peace and education programs around the Rotary world. And we need to bring education about peace into schools, uh, starting even at the kindergarten level. Uh, and there are many programs that are starting to do that. I'm in the process of rolling out uh, what I think will be a significant peace and youth and education uh, project for next year, in which we will be engaging 100,000 young community peace builders across the two zones, the 31 districts. And we're already in discussion with Debbie and Lyle and others in, in 7030 about partnering uh, and being one of the pilot districts for this program. So there are many ways that I think uh, Rotary can become known over time as a peace building, peace organization. Uh, there are, there's a lot of conflict in society, particularly in, in North America. <coughs> I believe that Rotarians have the, not only the capacity, but also the responsibility to do what we can to help bridge some of the partisan divide and bring peace and unity into our communities. We need to be more intentional in our engagement with law enforcement, with the faith community, with school superintendents, with civic leaders, uh, and become uh, increase our profile and become uh, better known, more engaged, uh, and more actively involved in securing peace and unity for all our citizens. So uh, with that, I'll uh, come to an end. I probably talked far too long. Uh, I do hope I've given you uh, an idea about Rotary's role as a peace building organization and the rich history that we've had. And I think the, the, the future going forward for Rotary, we've never been, it's never been more relevant. We, our role is so important. There's so much we can contribute. And what District 7030 is doing with Lyle and Debbie and others, uh, is a role model for the way other districts in our two zones uh, should, should emulate. So thank you again for the opportunity to be with you tonight. I wish you well for the rest of the evening. 
Uh, unfortunately, I have to leave. I have to go to another, another district event in a few minutes. But I've so enjoyed uh, this opportunity. Uh, I'm happy if, if, if there's uh, any particular questions I can say for a few minutes. But thank you again for this opportunity. Thank, thank you so much, Peter. On behalf of District 70, 30 and the Peace Committee, I know if you were with us in person, we would have been able to present you with a token. We have instead done a recognition of service certificate, which I would um, email you after the session. Very inspiring. A lot of our participants um, may not have known Rotary's history, although they are Rotarians. And as I mentioned earlier, we have non-Rotarians on as well. So I am sure that um, most of us would be very inspired to have heard the significant milestones Rotary has made in relation to peace. So thank you, thank you, thank you again. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you all. I want to take the opportunity at this point in time to recognize a few special people who have joined us. I saw immediate past District Governor Trevor Blake is with us on the call. Um, Leslie Harry Paul, past District Governor of 7030. And uh, Charles Seeley, our current District Governor of 7020, is also with us. Welcome and enjoy. At this point in time, uh, we, I would like to share a video presentation from the Presentation College San Fernando Trinidad on peace. Thursday, I attended a session where the Interact Clubs in South Trinidad actually produced video and poetry pieces on peace. And they were all very remarkable performances I can't show all of them tonight, so I've chosen one, but we will share with you a link in the chat to the other presentations, and I invite you to view them after the session. So sit back, enjoy this presentation. I just want equality. Equality is my only policy. We all bleed red. Therefore, instead, we should stand as one. Being one as a people is greater than none. We want the same change. We want equality. should not represent who I am. Racial discrimination should be banned. No respect for one another, tongue lashing and violence upon each other. We used to play together on lunch times, but now you see me and can only think of violence and crime. It is time for us to be at ease. I want our future to hold nothing but peace. Nowadays, we don't judge a book by its cover. So why judge a person by their skin color? Every skin color is unique. It is about time we stand up against racism and speak. For the Lord is our shepherd and we are his sons. All the colors of the world we shall join as one. Powerful message there from the Interact Club of Presentation College. At this stage, I would like to invite none other than our leader of District 7030, District Governor Lyle Chase of St. Lucia, to bring peaceful greetings to our gathering. DG Lyle. Thanks, Debs. Family of Rotary, wow, we've been treated today to a wonderful presentation. Um, I'm so delighted, I can't tell you how delighted I am that <clears throat> both our friends in 7020 and our friends in 7030 are here with us. Um, I believe that our two districts are two great districts in, in the whole of the two zones, 33 and 34. And I believe we have the greatest Rotarians in the world. And I am so proud of our district peace team who are doing such an excellent job. I have to tell you, I'm proud of all the teams. They're doing wonderful jobs. Membership, environment, peace, childhood obesity. 
the district is showing how great they really are. And, you know, today we have past leaders and we have future leaders because I see both DG Sonia and DG N Leslie. What a wonderful legacy we're leaving for those who come behind us. So today, Heal the World, I'm getting goosebumps. That was such an awesome presentation. Interact, my friends, interact. You know, not even, no, I mean, early act is what I meant to say, not even interact. I mean, awesome, awesome presentation. And I saw, I have to tell you this, I saw two bits of poetry from some, from in, some interactors as well that I'm sure Debbie will have them put up on the district website um, because they were awesome. They were awesome. We have wonderful, wonderful young people coming up behind us. So let us set the example. Let us set the pace. Let us have fun and show them true leadership as we are doing. And I thank you all for taking the time out. Tonight I saw we got up to 155 people, may have gone a little higher, but that's great. I know some of us are suffering from Zoom fatigue. I certainly am, I have to tell you. But at the end of the day, when I see things like this, I get empowered. I get my energy back. So my friends, I look forward to the next one. What can I tell you? I, I know that we have uh, a great uh, presentation coming up on the foundation because I've seen the, the speaker lineup, that's in November, but there will be others. We don't mean to crowd you, but at the end of the day, we can't see you. We can't be together. So this is how we are working to keep not just District 7030 together, but District 7030 and 7020 because my my buddy Charles is here, and together we made a promise to each other that we are keeping. So thanks, God bless. That's all I have to say tonight. You know I can talk too much. So Debbie, I promised I will be short. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Thank you very much, DJ Lyle. Special recognition to Aramo Audley Knight. Audley, I know you are with us as well. Thank you for joining. Uh, before I move on to the next, before I call on DG Charles to bring us greetings, I would like to showcase a presentation of projects for the first quarter within District 7030. COVID has been challenging for everyone in terms of being able to carry out the, road tree, the work of Rotary. And I was so proud when I went on the Facebook pages of most of the clubs to see that that did not stop us in 7030. So I invite you to take a look at this brief video presentation of some of the things we have been doing for the first quarter.
And that's just some of the projects. It was a hard choice just choosing basically one club, um, sometimes per country, in order to showcase. So great work by 7030. I want to recognize the presence of past district governor Felix Stubbs with us tonight as well. Felix, great to have you with us. And at this stage, I would like to invite District Governor Charles Seeley to bring us peaceful greetings. I am not seeing DG Charles on the call. I know he was here up until a minute ago. I'm not sure if we lost him. Okay, it appears that we have lost uh, DG Charles. Uh, so I would move on at this stage to invite our committee member, Brian Ramatali, to give the vote of thanks for this afternoon's session. Brian. Hello, Returns. I am deeply moved, motivated, inspired by what I've seen here this evening. I have goosebumps. I don't know if you do as well, but I want to say a hearty thank you to everybody, everybody who took the time to join here this evening to make this so successful. I have to say a, a, a truly special thanks to AG Debbie. AG Debbie has gone way beyond the call of duty here and has been extremely motivating to, to work with. And uh, she's our leader of the, uh, the, the district uh, peace team. And uh, I have to say that it is absolute pleasure to work with Debbie, absolute pleasure. She has done, she shakes things, she moves things and she will get things done. Believe me, she will get it done. And what you have seen here this evening has been really well organized by AG Debbie. So thank you, AG Debbie. I know uh, this is not, you don't want me to talk about you, but I have to say it has been fantastic. And I know everybody on this meeting is going to be very appreciative of what you have done. That early actors, to the entire team of the early actors and those who participated in coordinating that and making that so successful Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Put your hands together. That is absolutely fantastic. One of the greatest things I have seen in such a long time that makes me as a Rotarian stand up and say, I am a proud Rotarian. That makes us feel so proud that we are part of such a big network that even that we have a strong future with upcoming Rotarians. Fabulous work to all those who made that successful. I also want to say thanks to everyone who uh, came in from District 7020. Truly fantastic, very motivating, very inspiring, absolutely wonderful. Thank you for taking the time. To the DGs uh, uh, from uh, 7020, uh, DG Charles Seeley, thank you for your attendance. Uh, DG Lyle Chase again, and Maggie. So good to see you too. Oh, it's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, a special a round of applause for Maggie. Fantastic. Thank you for being here. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I am so happy to see you. I know I, I, it's, it's motivating. Thank you so much. And uh, DG Lyle, thank you for sharing Maggie on your screen too. We appreciate it tremendously. Thank you so much. Uh, to all the PDGs who took the time to join today, thank you. You are motivating us, encouraging us. You are absolutely wonderful, and thank you so much for being on this call today. All committee members, thank you for all your work and uh, behind the scenes and supporting AG Debbie and making it successful. And of course, you know, we have uh, our powerful uh, Sean Paddy. Thank you so much for all the work behind the scenes, making this very successful. But most importantly, I want to thank everybody who joined. I know. Uh, Peter Kyle is not here, but I want to say thank you to him, but I want to say a special thank you to every single individual who took the time to join us today. You are absolutely fantastic.
thank you for being here. I hope you feel motivated just as I do. And I want to say thank you so much. I know I had some small fines for everyone tonight, but I'm going to tell you as it is. I have goosebumps and we will now waive the fines for tonight. Next time I'll be ready for you. Don't worry, don't worry. Get your visa cards ready. But thank you for such an awesome evening. And I wish everyone a safe and successful uh, evening. Have a, uh, be safe out there with the COVID and have a wonderful night. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining tonight. It has been truly wonderful. Over to Debbie, AG Debbie. Thanks, Brian. And just to add the interpreters who give us human service, Vicky, Natalie, thank you guys so much. Uh, as we leave, I have asked Sean to play the Healy World video again because I don't know about you, but I have probably listened to it for about probably 50 times since I heard it and it's not enough. So enjoy. Thank you for coming. Thanks.